Hey, hey, Earth Science students. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to a new topic, uh, but welcome back to you. Uh, this will be your fourth video lecture. You had three as we went through the solar system kind of stuff. We obviously went into planets. Um, that's not really something we do, and, and this will be our little secret, probably because it, it just isn't that interesting overall to me. Uh, and there are plenty of chapters in the book that are that interesting to me that to fill up a, a year. So, so there you go on that. But today, uh, as much as I enjoy, and as you saw me through the videos uh, and through our classroom, as much as I enjoy uh, the moon and the moon phases and the eclipses and and talking about. Uh, how the tilt uh, creates so much uh, stuff in our lives. And you can even see the old tilt shows up right up here again. But even even with that, right, right along with that, man, I love talking about weather. Man, I am a weather uh, nerd. I uh, love talking about it. Uh, not so much watching, and I certainly don't watch the news for the weather, that kind of stuff. I don't want to know what the weather is. Uh, I like talking about uh, how it comes about and the formation of it, which is the idea of meteorology. So we're going to have some fun with this. We're going to have some fun with this in the classroom. Uh, we'll have some. We'll be doing some some weather report type things, uh, whether you, where you just tell us what the weather is, and then from that we'll talk about why that is. So basically, daily. Um, in the classroom, you'll be getting things that we talk about today as a reminder of how that's formed. So when we hear about the weather in the south and in the north and in the west uh, and in the central, when we hear about that, we'll talk about what's going on that makes that uh, situation occur. Uh, so as we go through chapter 12, we'll learn more and more about how our weather is formed and the goal of that would be simply in the future not so much for you to watch weather report to understand it you could you could probably just do that on your own uh, but what we want to think about is uh, the conditions that are causing that so when you hear that um, like for example right now we're experiencing well i shouldn't say when you watch this it will be late September, early October, and we're going through the first process of fall. But right now, as I'm making this on August 22nd, you can see down here in the corner, uh, we will be, we've experienced uh, some very cool August evenings. We're talking 60s. We're talking one time uh, during our week of, of uh, teacher meetings to get to get ready for the school year that when I got in my truck, of course it's super, super early, you don't even want to know what time, when I got in my truck to leave my house and drive to school in order to be there on time for meetings, uh, once I got away from my house, 55 degrees in August, uh, when it could have been 85 at night. So you might think to yourself, man, why why that change? Well, you're gonna learn about why that, why that might have been the same case. So as we get through chapter 12, at the conclusion of chapter 12, the goal would be that when you hear about a weather phenomenon or when you experience it or when someone says, hey, why is this the case? You'll have enough information to kind of give them a little heads up, a little what's what uh, going on there. Uh, also, our goal is that if you look at a weather map, uh, say you look at a weather map for a particular day, and based on what's happening in your current area and what's happening to the left because on in our weather as you're going to soon learn is that our weather patterns travel from left to right because of the airflow the movement of air in our continent is left to right that's why uh, storms go from kind of the southwest to northeast path because that's the way our air is moving uh, through our area but we'll get to all that uh, in time so let's get started and but again thank you for opening this up thank you for playing this and uh, again hope everything is well with you 
as I mentioned, uh, this will be late September, early October, by the time you watch this, and it's officially uh, our assignment. So hopefully the school year is going well. Um, I know thinking back to uh, August uh, 25th, we kind of started off uh, rough with being in yellow, but hopefully that's as far as it's gotten, and we've been able to be in class all the time. Uh, but again, that's what these video lectures are for. These video lectures are designed at one to help you be able to do this in your own time and to avoid those long classroom lectures. Uh, but they're also in place just in case we have to get we get shut down for a short a amount of time that we've already got the structure in place for you to come and watch your stuff and get your activities and uh, we can have a quality of the school year regardless of what our situation is or our current situation is or what. Oh, excuse me. So as you can see what's on your screen, I know in the in chapter 28 a lot of times not everything was on the screen in the beginning. We moved around to cover everything in the same but that's not the case here. What you see on your screen is everything we're going to cover in this lecture. So it won't be a tremendously long one. Uh, hopefully I can keep it within 30 minutes. And then as you pause and write down your stuff and draw your drawings, uh, you will um, get it out there to that hour, 75 minute uh, time span. So that's our plan. That's our goal. And so with that, we will get started. But again, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, for watching this and for taking care of everything you need to. Uh, but as always, be sure you take care of all the notes. That way when I check them the next time uh, that you've got everything that you need um, on your paper. So with that, we will get started. All right, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, weather. I mean, I know we all enjoy uh, the sunshine, and we, we don't enjoy the ninety or the hundred degree heat sometimes, but we do enjoy the sunshine. I mean, the idea of sunshine gets us thinking about being outside, maybe getting us to some water, maybe getting us whether it's a pool or a creek or a lake, maybe it. You think about just going outside and playing and doing stuff and getting some baseball going, go play some tennis, go for a hike, ride, walk, uh, if you're, if you, maybe even a horse ride if that's your deal, maybe some four-wheelers, whatever. But the idea of sunshine just makes us think about getting outside and enjoying ourselves. But we also enjoy the nice cool breeze as it comes through. Or even for me, I love the fall breeze. When it's just a little bit crisp, it's got a little bit of cold snap to it. I mean, it makes you think, I need a jacket. I love that feel. And just the whole fall and, and the colors of the trees. And, uh, and I mean, who doesn't enjoy a nice, gentle rain? Now, I don't, want, I don't need to be caught in, certainly, or be out in, um, you know, the real hard rains. Uh, I know at our house, we've got... Uh, low areas in the back of our uh, house property I should say where we'll get a little bit of nice little stream going on and water collects there uh, so we don't need and plus it just moves everything around the wood chips and the gardens and tears up plants and stuff so we don't want to necessarily need that but who doesn't enjoy a nice gentle spring or fall rain where just you that sound and the smell of water in the air, who doesn't enjoy that? I mean, uh, so, but that's all the ideas of our daily uh, weather that we're going to be talking about. So let's get a few definitions out of the way, and this will be your first uh, things that you want to write down. So let's uh, let's pull up a let's see what colors we got in here. Oh, we're talking about fall so much. Let's go with the nice little orange. And, uh, and let's get this level of ink right there. Close that down. So we're we're right here. So you want to be sure to write this stuff down. So whether you pause this or whatever, but be sure you have these three things 
uh, meteorology and what it de what it means, weather and what it means, and climate what it means. And but we're going to talk about these, and we'll talk about them in class as well. So meteorology, a hey, pretty simple, straightforward. It's just a study. Anytime you see that that suffix ology, that means you're studying something. So whether it's biology, geology. Um, wonder why chemistry doesn't have a chemology, but they don't. They just call it chemistry. Uh, you know, whatever ology you might be, archaeology, uh, physiology, um, it just means the study of something. In this case, we're studying the conditions that cause our weather. So whether it's air masses, whether it's the tilt of the earth, whether it's uh, imbalanced heating, whether it is uh, airflow, whether it is precipitation, water cycle, whatever it might be, whatever conditions are involved in causing our weather, that's what the study of that is what meteorology is. So now let's talk about weather. And weather, we're talking daily or short time. You know, down here I have long term. So we're talking short term here. So a day, a week, whatever, short term. Okay, so these are, are daily changes. So like that's why it's a weather forecast, but it's about tomorrow. It's about what you have today. Excuse me. Get a drink here. All right. So that's the weather, short-term, daily, whereas climate is long-term. Uh, we're talking years, decades, centuries, okay, epochs if you want to go super long, uh, the conditions that form our biomes. And by biomes, we're talking about these land areas that have distinct weather patterns, and those weather patterns are what cause uh, kind of the structure of the area. Like, for example, uh, the tropical rainforest, that's a biome. And it's the weather that kind of causes that. It's the constant warm temperatures uh, from the where they are from there and the large amounts of rain that they get. They can grow all these plants, these big tall trees, lots and lots of them. Okay, that's the climate and the weather kind of uh, forms that. Same thing with the Arctic. Okay, that's a biome. Always frozen, always snow and ice covered, and it's because very, very cold, okay, from the air masses and their position on the earth in reference to the, in relation to the sun, uh, their wind patterns all contribute to causing that biome. Okay, think about a desert. That's a biome. Okay, it's caused by its condition is positioned on the earth. It's caused by its association with the sun in reference to the equator. It's caused by um, a lack of moisture. It's not that they don't get any. Uh, and it doesn't always have to be hot. It can be cold in the evenings. Much like planets that are facing the sun, the side is not facing the sun. Uh, so again, that's a biome and the weather kind of contributes to its condition. So that's climate. So you want to make sure you have all of that. Alright, so for our next topic, oh, I got outside the bar the box here. Let's talk about imbalanced heating. Now we would know, hopefully you would know and understand that not every spot on the earth has the same temperature. Okay? The further north and south that you get away from the equator the cooler it gets, just like going up a mountain, uh, it gets cooler. So the Arctic, this area up in here, North and South Pole, they are much colder than what the equator would be. And that stands the reason we all understand that. But as we go this direction, in this direction from the equator, it gets cooler. And that's because of imbalanced heating, it's because of tilt, tilt to the earth. We talked a lot about that in in, uh, in uh, chapter 28 
and always remember that our, our degree of tilt is 23 23 degrees and that's what causes our seasons as we talked about that's what causes imbalanced heating and the number 23 is easy to remember because if you're from my generation that's Michael Jordan okay your generation is LeBron James I guess that should be I almost went B but I guess that should be a J LJ so that's the difference but 23 is the number 23 is easy to remember because of those two um, uh, people very very well-known people so but because it is tilted 23 degrees as we mentioned it causes our seasons but it causes this equator to be directly in line with the Sun so it gets a majority of the heat uh, and then if we get up here to this latitude line or down to this latitude line gets a little bit cooler because it's not directly shining in uh, the, from the sun just like if you were in your backyard at night and you've got a flashlight and you're pointing it right at that right at a tree okay the tree is going to get the direct amount of light from the flashlight just like the equator gets the direct amount of light sunlight from the sun but to the areas to the left and right of the tree, they're still going to get light. You'll still be able to see those areas, but just less and less. And as you get further away from the tree, left and right, the light gets to be dimmer, uh, which, would re which would reflect uh, the heat getting dimmer, i use air quotes, or uh, being less, being cooler. So that's the way uh, that works. Uh, so imbalanced heating not every spot on the earth has the same heating. The heat is different levels based on your location. The last thing that we're going to talk about, oh, I should say, uh, be sure that you do this drawing. Okay. Now, it isn't so much that you uh, have the continents, but just if you'll draw the circle, do the axis the way they are to show the tilt, do the latitude lines, you know, at least these three and we'll know the middle one is the equator uh, and then put these sun rays in here one two three four five six or is that seven no yeah it is six and they are pointing basically at the latitude lines uh, to some degree so if you put those in there and showcase the imbalance heating and we know that this one uh, is the most and then as we go down this direction, they get to be less heat. And if we go this direction, it gets to be less heat. So the at least the globe, the circle, the axis, the latitude lines, and the sun rays showcasing where it hits. Okay, so that would be part two of your notes. The first part was the definitions. The second part is the imbalanced heating. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about is this box right here. Now I just tell you now, what I would like you to do is certainly just make a chart that represents the air masses. So you will make this chart on your paper so that I can see. But I would also like you to, at least to some degree, and if you want to get colored pencils and really showcase these different uh, air masses, that's great. Maybe I'll give you a little bit of extra credit for doing that. Uh, if you just want to label it, that's fine. All you simply want to do is, uh, and it doesn't have to be anything fantastic, but just draw a general outline of the shape of the United States. Okay, be sure to get Florida in here. Be sure to get California and, and Texas. Um, you don't have to worry about Central America or, or this stuff down here or any of the Bahamas, that kind of stuff, or even Canada but just uh, label at least the different types of wind air masses and these arrows so you can see, so we can see that so you can see that the maritime polar goes across okay goes across the United States this way the continental polar goes across this way the maritime tropical goes across this way and, and over here and over here and right away we should see why 
California is warmer, okay, not only warmer than us, but essentially warm all year long. Because do any of the polar air masses ever reach Los Angeles, California? Okay, this one would go this way, so that's a no. This one goes this way, so that's a no. This one comes over here, so that's a no. The only one that might, that's pointing at it, is maybe this. But by the time that wind air mass gets all the way down to California, it has been warmed up. Because, I mean, it goes through Nevada. So you know that area isn't cold or has uh, any cool air. And so by the time it gets to California, it's warmed up. To where even if it does reach there, it's just a nice warm uh, wind coming out of the north. So that's why L.A. not only is warmer than us, but it's typically about the same temperature all year long. They don't really have winter. And it's because none of those winter winds ever get down there. And that's the kind of things you're going to learn as we go through Chapter 12. So you'll create this chart. That will be number three. This is number one. This is number two. This is number three. And this will be number four. So let's talk about this. First of all, let's talk about Arctic air masses. There are three types. There are Arctic, okay, there are polar, and there are tropical. Okay, tropical air masses come out of the equator area, as you can see here. Okay, polar comes from the upper north, okay, Canada level and above. And then, of course, the Arctic are even further up either further north uh, than the polars and they they either cool or warm the areas now your other two types let me change colors let's go back to blue here just real quick is you got your merit no wait yeah you've got I, I, I was doing it right you got maritime or you've got continental okay so continental you should be able to understand that means it's an air mass that is coming off of a continent. Okay, so then maritime or marine, spoiler alert, would be coming off of an ocean. So that's why this maritime here comes off of this area, this maritime comes off of this ocean, maritime comes off of this ocean, maritime comes off of this ocean. So if we want to know why New York has incredibly cold winters well look where their winter winds come from or their wintertime winds cold because they're polar and they're coming off of water okay which would never ever actually be warm so that explains that and again that's information you're going to get from chapter 12 when we talk about why okay why is it that that way and if you think about that upper northeast and all of the snow that they get, well, again, here's the reason why. Their winds, their cold winter winds come off the ocean, so it's going to collect a lot of water, okay, evaporated water. So they're going to bring all that evaporated water in, and it's going to be cold. It's going to get over the land, going to get colder, and therefore produce lots of snow. You want to know why here in Missouri, we we get some snow, but not very much. Well, our coldest polar winds just barely grazes our state. Okay, so we can cool down. We can get down to ten some nights, but typically a winter day still can be in the forties. 50s for a majority of the time so we are cooler than summertime but we don't get those we don't get those long-term harsh winter winds and the winds that we do get where do they come from from a continent so the only real chance we've got to get snow is the fact that the winds that we do get do pass over lakes and rivers and things like that so the snows that we do get on occasion okay, and it's usually just the leftovers from an earlier from somebody else's snow that's why we don't get very much if it comes off the Great Lakes 
that comes off the big rivers, okay, or come from Colorado, uh, that kind of stuff. But a lot of our winds, if you think about southwest to northeast, what riverways are southwest of us that could produce snow? Okay, there's the big Grand Lake in Miami, but coming across Kansas, coming across Oklahoma, not a lot of big waterways there. So that's why we don't get a tremendous amount of snow. And again, that's the kind of information you're going to get from Chapter 12 and from me, of course. So that's the idea behind maritime. That's the idea behind continental, the idea behind polar, the idea behind tropical, and the idea behind Arctic. So, that is our information for section one of chapter 12. And so again, be sure that you take uh, the time to get the four parts. Again, that was the definitions down here, the imbalanced heating and those instructions the chart over here and those instructions and the map and those instructions and if you need those again just be sure to go back in the video and see those parts and I will explain all that uh, to you so again um, chapter 12 is really going to be uh, really going to explain the way th why our weather is in our part of the world so with that, again, we hope that everything is well with you, that everything is going as good as possible, and that you are able to enjoy your school year in whatever format uh, it is. Hopefully we have continued to stay in-house and gotten this done. But whatever our situation is, we'll get through it together and uh, do what we got to do to take care of what we got to take care of. So with that... Uh, uh, we'll start the goodbye process. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I uh, can't wait to get in the classroom and talk about all this stuff. And with that, we will say goodbye.